Hello and welcome back to the Good 5 Cent Cigar Newscast. My name is Alexa Patamianos, thank you so much for joining us. Coming up this week, an editor rating of local coffee joints, what's happening this week at URI, and as always, stay tuned for your Roadie Sports Corner. The state of Rhode Island is certainly not short on places to pick up a good cup of coffee. The Cigar's own Kelly McKay checked out some of the best local shops in the newest edition of Best of Rhode Island. I ranked three coffee shops near campus to see where students can get the best cup of coffee. Starting off with number three on my list is Brew Coffee Bar on Fortin Road. Brew has a great atmosphere with many different coffee flavors to choose from. I got the French Toast Coffee and an Acai Bowl. Being in the Emporium on campus makes Brew a great place to study and they have a wide variety of drinks and food to choose from on their menu. My name is Audrey. I work at Brew Coffee Bar in the Emporium up at the top of campus. You should definitely stop by Brew if you like coffee, acai bowls, breakfast sandwiches, and we even got lunch sandwiches. And on Mondays we have dollar coffee, so definitely check it out. Number two on my list is Audrey's Coffee House and Lounge, located in the village at South County Commons. Audrey's is another great coffee shop that has a great atmosphere for students looking to get work done or to hang out with friends. They have an even wider range of coffee drinks to choose from, and their menu also includes alcoholic beverages. I got the Harvest Moon Latte, which is maple and cinnamon flavored, and it was amazing. While this coffee shop is a little farther away from campus, it was well worth the drive. I love Audrey's. Today I got a pumpkin chai latte and a breakfast sandwich. It's one of my favorite places to come and it has a nice vibe too. You can come and bring your homework and study and just an overall nice place. It's in South County Commons. My number one place to get coffee in Rhode Island is TLC Coffee Roasters. With over 20 flavors of iced coffee every day, TLC has the widest selection of coffee flavors I've seen a coffee shop offer. They also serve breakfast and lunch. TLC is the perfect place to stop on your way to class to get a cup of coffee or my personal favorite, the chai tea lattes. Their friendly staff and welcoming atmosphere ranks this coffee shop as my favorite. Hi, I've been coming to TLC for years and the smoothies are my favorite. There's so many choices of food and everything and the coffee wall is also a really great addition. Here is your week at URI. Sounds right. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. On Wednesday, October 4th, Health Services held a booth in the Memorial Union to provide students with self-examination guides. On Thursday, October 5th, is the third annual Quad Fest, featuring representation from many clubs and organizations, the Free Farmers Market, Day of Giving Tables, and more. Looking forward to next week, on Tuesday, October 10th, President Parlange will give his State of the University address in Edwards Auditorium. And now over to Nathan Robillard with your Roadie Sports Corner. Thanks, Alexa. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Roadie Sports Corner, the number one place for weekly updates on all things Roadie Athletics. I'm Nathan Robillard. <laughs> Football returned to winning ways this week with a confident win over Bryant on Family Weekend. For more on the story, here's Michael Petrasky. Following a loss on the road last week against fellow CAA opponent Villanova, the Rams look to bounce back against their in-state rival, the Bryant Bulldogs. It was Family Weekend here at URI, so the stadium was full of fans and parents, and the energy was as high as ever. On the first play of the game, quarterback Kasim Hill completed this absolute dime to Marquise Buchanan. The opening drive for the Rams was then capped off by this one-yard rushing touchdown by Gabe Sloat. Bryant responded with their own big play as quarterback Zebai Eckhouse completed this 49-yard bomb to Matthew Proshaka. as the Bulldogs' opening drive was capped off by a 14-yard touchdown to tight end Connor Lathrop. After a three and out by the Rams, the Bulldogs marched down the field and scored a two-yard rushing touchdown. But the Rams' defense made an incredible block of Bryant's extra point attempt to keep the score at 13-7. After a failed QB sneak by Bryant forced a turnover on downs, Coach Fleming had this to say about what that momentum swing meant to the team. 
you know, that's a big stop. You know, I, you know they, were, they were they were battling, and they're they're going to have a chance to pop it in there. It made a big big difference for us. And uh, you know, anytime you make a fourth down stop, it's a it's a big momentum swing, particularly in the red area. Following that stop, Kasim Hill threw a 57-yard touchdown to wide receiver John Irby. But the scoring didn't stop there, as Kasim Hill ran it in from five yards out, and the Rams took a 21-13 lead. And during the Rams' 21 unanswered point streak, wide receiver Darius Savage made this incredible one-handed catch for a touchdown. But it wasn't just the offense making great plays. Here's linebacker A.J. Pena about him and the defense's great performance. You know, it's a Rhode Island rival, you know, and throughout practice, you know, we emphasize, you know, how important this game is, you know. And, uh, you know, we know they're a passing team, so, you know, I'm just locked and loaded, ready to go on these guys every time, so, yeah. The Bulldogs' defense also made some great plays, including this diving interception by Sean Hunt. But the Rams answered back with an interception by Seed Gibbs, which after review was ruled just short of the goal line. Running back Jaden McKenzie then took it in from one yard out to give the Rams a 35-13 lead. The Bulldogs then blocked a punt and ran in for a touchdown to take a 35-19 lead. The Rams then scored on back-to-back -back drives to do a Katero Summers four-yard catch and a 53-yard bomb by backup QB Devin Farrell to wide receiver Jig Williams. To cap off the scoring, wide receiver Matthew Prochaka caught a three-yard pass to reach our final score of 49-26, with the Rams getting the win. The Rams head off on the road to face in-state rival Brown on Saturday at 1. In Mead Stadium, I'm Michael Petrowski. Taking a look at some other scores around campus this week, women's soccer picked up the first two wins of their 2023 campaign, outscoring their opponents 4-0 in a pair of shutouts. Men's soccer fell to their third loss in four matches in St. Louis before taking on George Mason on Wednesday. Volleyball fell in a pair of matches at George Washington before traveling to Fordham on Wednesday. Women's tennis took to their newly renovated home courts for the first time in over a year on Sunday, winning 11 of their 16 singles matches at the URI Fall Invite. Men's golf finished 8th at the UConn Invitational at Great Horse, and women's rowing won their first race of the year at the head of the riverfront in Hartford, Connecticut. Both men's and women's cross country were also in action this week. The men's team finished 12th overall in the battle at Beantown in Boston, while the women's team finished 40th of 44 teams at the Paul Short Invite in Pennsylvania. And finally, congratulations to Tony Liu for the, earning his first A-10 Men's Golf Rookie of the Week honor. He placed 21st out of 72 golfers at last weekend's McDonald Cup. That's all we have for this week's edition of Roadie Sports Corner. For live updates across all URI athletics, be sure to follow us on social media at Cigar Sports. Alexa, back to you. That's all we have for you this week at the 5 Cent Cigar Newscast. As always, make sure to check us out at RhodeyCigar.com and follow us on social media at RhodeyCigar. From Kingston, Rhode Island, I'm Alexa Patemianos. Have a great week, Rhodey.